Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Mickey. In case you don't know, I also make YouTube Shorts. This is honestly a really great format for me to be able to give out bite-sized advice on all kinds of different topics. There's many things that I can say to hopefully teach you something that doesn't actually require a full 10-20 minute video. So here let's see my top 10 best marketing and success quick tips. This one underutilized skill made this developer $5 million. That's an insane amount, so this is Thronefall. It's definitely one of the most successful games of all time. It is a mega hit and people love it. And the developer was very smart and did something that a lot of developers completely ignore. And that is simply making prototypes. It sounds too simple, but this generally is a very valuable skill that also generally quite a lot of people ignore. And I have to say myself as well included. Many times when I think about a game idea, I just start working on the first thing that comes to mind. Whereas what you should do is very different. You should definitely test out multiple ideas, figure out what works and then work on that. This developer, Jonas Roller, he talked about this process in detail. How he didn't know what game to work on next, and in order to solve that, instead of jumping onto the first idea that came to mind, instead of that, they just did a ton of prototypes to try to figure out what they should work on next. They tried some ecology theme game, then some kind of card focused game, they made something weird with some flowers, then they made a kind of jumping climbing game, even made some physical prototypes of a card game, and then they made a nice tower defense style game. It was only by going through all these ideas that they figured out these ones don't work, and this one does work, does seem to have something special. Which again, at the end, it led to this game making over $5 million. So definitely do not neglect this very important skill that you have at your disposal. Don't just work on the first thing that comes to mind, try out different ideas, see what works, and then once you have something that you think works, even on a very bare bones level, if it works on that prototype stage, then you can invest more time into building a proper game, and your odds of finding success with that one will be much better than if you just work on the first thing that comes to mind. This is the closest thing that I know of that is some kind of secret, some kind of cheat to make indie game development possible. And that is simply cost of living. I genuinely believe this is the closest thing there is to a trick in this industry. And if you can manipulate this variable, your odds of finding success are much, much better. Let's say you're making a game in six months, which incidentally, that's another one of my best tips. Go ahead and make small games. I highly recommend you make games between three and six months of development. It is much, much better in, let's say, a two year time frame to spend those two years making four separate games, as opposed to spending two years on just one game. So in terms of getting knowledge faster, that is a great approach. I highly recommend you make small games, but just in monetary terms, that is also great advice. If you make a game in six months and you live in a country where you can get by with about $2,000 per month, which incidentally, this was my number, back when I was just making games without making this channel, without making videos at all, when all I was doing was just making games and nothing else, back then, this was my number. Back then, my goal was to try to get $2,000 per month of development, which over here in Portugal, that actually allows me to have a nice living. Compare that to someone living in somewhere like San Francisco or London, where they need $10,000 just to get by. If you compare those two developers, both of them working on the same six month game, then one developer just needs to make 12 grand in order for that project to turn a profit, whereas the other one is going to need $60,000. Now, Steam is very difficult, it's very crowded, but if you have a decent game and good marketing knowledge, you can certainly make 12,000 per game, but making 60,000 that becomes quite a bit more difficult. So that is why this is my best tip, my best secret. If you live in a high cost of living country, you need to sell a ton of copies in order to make a living, but if you live in a low cost of living country, you can get by with much fewer copies, which is easier to attain. Now, of course, it's actually a difficult thing to control. Like I said, if you live in somewhere like London or San Francisco, it might be very difficult to try to get by with, let's say, $2,000 per month. But if you really want to make it as an indie game dev, then this is really my best tip. The difference between a low cost of living and a high cost of living is going to be the difference between making indie dev on, I wouldn't say easy mode, because it's always hard, but on normal mode, as opposed to super insane hard mode. I have made over a million dollars with my games. That's about eight games over the course of about 10 years. But now the question is, can I make another million dollars? I think the answer is yes, but at the same time, I know for certain the answer cannot be the same as I did. My first game came out in 2013. Back then, the world was very different. Steam was completely different. This game made $140,000, but if I launched it right now, I don't think it would get anywhere close to that. So basically what I'm trying to say here is how indie game marketing is a very fast moving field. Things that worked even just one year ago might not work nowadays. Back then, wishlists were not a thing at all. You could not wishlist games on Steam in 2013. These Steam festivals, they also did not exist back then. So marketing is definitely something that changes quite a lot and what worked previously might not work nowadays. Or rather, the current meta might be very different from the previous meta. So I definitely encourage you to learn about indie game marketing. For example, you can watch the videos that I did with Chris Zukowski. Chris has a ton of really excellent indie game marketing knowledge. You can watch tons of marketing videos on YouTube, but remember if those videos are a few years old, if so, then remember what worked previously might not necessarily work nowadays. You don't suck, you're not lazy. The reason why you might not be able to finish your games is because of this compared to this. So basically the big issue is that when people start trying to make games, usually their only context are usually AAA games, games that are massive. So when someone tries to become an indie game developer, they try to think about the games that they like to play. And chances are those are games that are made up of teams of hundreds or perhaps even thousands of people. Games like GTA or Assassin's Creed literally have thousands of people working on them. So the biggest issue that beginners make is they try to build this as opposed to trying to build this. So the answer obviously is scope, obviously size. You try to make a massive game, 
And in doing so, you will never reach the end because it is literally physically impossible. And then you end up quitting and never actually finish anything. So this is one of my best advice is always make small games. Make something that you think you can make in about one week. And chances are it will actually take one month. Because that is the other problem that beginners have. Which is they have no concept of how long things take to make. You might think that even a small game can be made in about a week. But if you're a beginner, chances are you're not yet very efficient. So even a small game you think is going to take a week, it's actually going to take one month. Well, to be fair, there's actually something that is not related to just beginners. Even experienced devs like myself, usually when I estimate how long something takes, it always takes way too long. So if you think something is going to take basically one week, chances are it is going to take one month. So if you do want to actually finish games, then basically stop trying to make massive AAA games by yourself. Instead, make something quite a bit smaller. And when defining what actually counts as small, define what you think small is and then make something even smaller because chances are it is going to take quite a bit longer than you think. My best advice for indie devs is make small games. That is something that I talk about all the time. And whenever I do, there's always an obvious question, which is what exactly is a small game? And there's another one, perhaps a bit more of a negative interpretation, which is simply, I don't want to make Flappy Bird. With the assumption being that a small game really just has to be of that scope and nothing else. So here, let me tell you one very crucial fact, which is how definition of small is basically dependent on your own skills. If you are a beginner, then yeah, small game is something that takes a month to make. It won't probably be something like Flappy Bird. If you are a beginner, then chances are it's going to be a challenge just to make something simple and kind of like this. However, as your skills increase, then what counts as a small game becomes quite a bit larger. For example, I can talk about my own skills. I've been making games for over 10 years now, and my definition of a small game is this. This is my latest game, which is called Dinky Guardians. And this is an automation simulation management game with multiplayer co-op. It's got an insane amount of complexity, insane amount of systems. But since I already have quite a lot of experience, I was able to build this entire game in about 7 months. So I really just want to dispel this myth, making small games does not equal Flappy Bird. If you are a beginner, then sure. But as you gain more and more experience, the thing that counts as a small game becomes larger and larger, until you can get to the point where you can build something quite substantial in just 6 months. So if you want some practical advice, make small games and make tons of them so you gain more experience, so what counts as a small game becomes larger and larger. Here's a tale of two games, one of which made $28 million and the other one made $250,000. Here they are, can you guess which is which? So this one over here looks super gorgeous, look at that, very inventive, very interesting. Whereas this one over here looks super basic, it looks like it has some very basic graphics, no post-processing, it's all seemingly very simple. And you can probably already guess the answer, so yep, this one over here made $28 million, whereas this one over here made $250,000. That's a pretty massive gap, and again, visually, I would probably say that Bionic Bay actually looks better. So why was this game so much more successful than this one? And the main reason is something very important that I always talk about, and that is going to be genre. Bionic Bay generally looks super cool, I mean visually this is one of the most visually interesting games that I've seen, but it is a platformer. Whereas Supermarket Simulator, this one is visually very barren, very bare bones, but it is on the very popular simulator genre. Basically, if you make an excellent game, but on a very limited genre, your level of success will be very limited, whereas if you make just a normal game on a very hot genre, your odds of success are much, much higher. The genre that you pick is one of the most important decisions you will ever make in making your game. And usually people decide on a genre on pretty much just a few seconds as soon as they think of a game idea. Now, if you want to make games just as a hobby, then that's fine. You can make whatever you want. If you want to make a platformer, make a platformer. But if you're trying to make games as a living, I would really encourage you to pay very close attention to genre. Choosing the right genre will literally make your work 10 times easier. Your first game will not make any money, but that's not a problem. It is only a problem if you do this. So this is a rough chart that talks about how many games each studio makes. So a lot of studios make one game, then very few studios make their second game, even fewer make their third game, fourth game, fifth game, and so on. The reason why it's not a problem that your first game doesn't make any money is because you are going to gain knowledge, you are going to gain experience, which will then increase your odds of finding success when you make your second, third, fourth, fifth game. So the important thing is that you keep making games, because knowledge basically accumulates over time. So all the mistakes that you will make on game one, you will not make those same mistakes on game two. You will make different mistakes, but then you will correct those mistakes on game three, and four, five, and so on. So my first game, I think, made about just two dollars. Then my game after that, I think, made about five dollars. Back then, I was making Flash games, and I just continued making tons of games. So back then, over the course of about five years, I made about 40 Flash games, so that's four zero. That's a lot of games, which gave me a lot of knowledge. So then, when I moved on to Steam, over the next 10 years, over the course of eight games, I managed to make over a million dollars. So again, all of that started from making zero on the very first game. So as long as you don't do this, as long as you don't do that, as long as you keep on learning and you improve game by game, if you do that, and if you focus on the long term, your odds of finding success are much, much higher. Making indie games is an insanely difficult task. 
One of the most difficult things you can do is build a game that is financially successful. If you look on Steam stats, you can see how most games don't even make $1,000. There's only about 15% that make over 50k. So this seems really discouraging, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Making games as a living is obviously awesome, but always remember, you can't always just make games for fun. In fact, for a lot of people, that is probably the best approach. Just work on a nice, stable job to get some revenue, some money, and then at the end of your day or on your weekends, then you can make some fun games and really just make them just for fun without any hopes of trying to get any financial success. Doing it like this can be fun, can be doable, and of course, perhaps one of your games might actually find success, but doing so is very difficult. So as you're reading about indie game development, you might see a lot of posts talking about specifically just about the money side, but always remember you can make games for fun, it can be just a fun hobby, just by yourself at the end of your day, on your weekend, just build something nice and fun, just enjoy with your friends. If you do it as a hobby, it will be much less stressful, you will enjoy it quite a bit more. So yep, get a nice stable job with a nice stable paycheck and then make games just for fun. And if you want to learn more about Steam game marketing, then check out the link in the description. I've got a bunch of videos that I did with Steam marketing expert Chris Sukowski. Chris knows a lot about Steam game marketing, so if you want to make successful games, definitely listen to his advice. And if you want a ton of that advice condensed into just one single place, if so, then get the Wishlist Invisibility Masterclass. Alright, so I hope you found these shorts with bite-sized advice useful in your own learning journey. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.